So good afternoon everyone. Uh, so you are welcome down to Badagi Heritage Museum once again. And I want to welcome you all to Badagi Town, the haven of tourism. So the museum is talking about the Atlantic Triangular Slave Trade. But the building itself was built in the year 1863. It happens to be the district officer's office. But the building was vacated in the year 1958. And that was two years before Nigeria independence. In 2002, it was later converted to museum by the former governor of Lagos State in the person of Hajiwa Dubola Metinobu under the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. So in the museum today we have eight different sections and then those guys are talking about the transatlantic slave trade. Slave trade started in the year 1445 by the Portuguese because they were given the right by the Vatican to explore along the west coast of Africa. So initially it was the start of gold and ivory. But when they got to West Africa, some Africans were kidnapped and they were taken down to Lisbon to serve as a proof to Sir Henry the Navigator. The first gallery is talking about the introduction, so I'm already doing the introduction already. So the Navigator, when they took those Africans down to Lisbon, and then he said those Africans are much stronger and they can easily adjust to any climatic condition, so they have to come back and then demand for more enslaved Africans. So they were taken through, the, uh, through, through West Africa down to West Indies. At the West Indies, those Africans are forced to work on the plantation. That's where they plant sugar canes, tobacco, cotton, rice, and bananas. And you see everything they planted will be harvested and will be taken back to Europe. And then Europe, those crops are turned to finishing goods. They turn sugar cane to sugar, tobacco into cigarettes, cotton to textiles. And they're being returned to Africa in exchange of more enslaved Africans. So the system is triangular. And because they're working between the Atlantic Ocean, so they come across the Atlantic triangular slave trade. And then we have the African civilization before the European came down to West Africa. We need to talk about the Egyptian. The black are the one that dominates Egypt before the European now, before the Arab now took over. So you are told that if out of 100% of the pharaohs, 99% of them are blacks. During the era of Moses, Joseph, and everyone, those pharaohs are black because they are the ones that dominate Egypt before the Arabs took over. And also, we have the first university in the world. There's a man called Achimede who got education from Africa. Pluto, the Roman Empire, got education from Africa. So that's what Africa has been civilized before the European came down to West Africa. And also we have the Europeans in West Africa between 1640 to 1750, how they divide Africa into four major coasts. And each of the coasts was named after what they discovered. So the first one is called the Green Coast, and the Green Coast is Sierra Leone and Senegal. While the second one is called the Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast is Côte d'Ivoire. The third one is the Gold Coast. Gold Coast is Ghana. While the last one is the Slave Coast. And the Slave Coast is Wida and Benin Republic then Badagri and Niger Delta in Nigeria. And the reason why they are called the Slave Coast is because out of 10 enslaved Africans that left the shore of West Africa, Badagri and then Wida counted for 3 or 4 out of 10. That's why they are called the Slave Coast. I need to tell you that Badagri happened to be the major slave port for 417 years. Badagri happened to be the major slave port for 417 years because they started slavery in Badagri in the year 1473 and they signed the abolition treaty in the year 1852. March 18, 1852, which was legally continued in 1888. So if you count from 1873 to 1888, that is 470 years of slavery in Badagri. And the second gallery is talking about the capture. There we have the weapons used in slave raiding. So you see the dame gun, the iron sword. At the same time, we have the chains used on the enslaved African. And if an African is captured from your state in Nigeria, Badagri here happens to be the nearest slave port to your state. And then there's no other means of transportation apart from trekking, except those that stay at the coastal area that can transport their slave with cane down to the slave market. But those that are still at the interland, they have to trek out the way from Oshun State down to Baragi. So in a voyage out of 60, there's only 15 or 20 that will make it alive to the slave port because they will be attacked by the wild animals because they have to pass through the jungle. Then we have how the separate families doing the transatlantic slave trade. Then here, yeah, that the same place are going to see the medium of exchange. Those things they use in exchange of enslaved Africans, like the bottle, umbrella, and then some other stuff like that. And also we have the slave facilitators. Those are the slave dealers. We have both African and the foreign slave dealer. African dealers, we have the like of King Togbesu of Dahomey, that, that is in Benin Republic. We have King Avi of Congo. We have King Kosoko of Lagos. In Badagri here, we have eight chiefs in Badagri, and all the chiefs are slave dealers. 
But the prominent slave dealers are Chief Sumbu Mobi and then Chief Wau of Ahobiko Quarters. So those are the prominent slave dealers in Badagi. Then we have the foreign dealers like Captain Hukuru. We have the likes of Humphrey Morris. Then we have a man called Prince Henry the Navigator. Navigator was the one that started the transatlantic slave trade. So I need to tell you that in the year 1411, Navigator fled to a place called Dakar in Senegal. When they got to Dakar, he kidnapped a prince. But in Africa, it was a taboo for a prince to be kidnapped because once the king died, the prince would become the next king. So he was now given 29 men in exchange of the prince. So that is when you see that those Africans, he can come back and then demand for more. Then they were now taken down to Lisbon. When they got to Lisbon, they were asked to work on about three acres of land. When they are working, for two weeks, none of them fall sick and none of them die. They have to compare them to the red Indians they are using. That's why they say that Africans are stronger. So they have to come back and then, after getting the gold and ivory, they also get more enslaved Africans. Then the next place is, so at the same place I'm going to see adverts. They advertise the, the enslaved Africans. And also we have the next gallery called Equipment. There you are going to see a cone-shaped port called the Slave Drinking Port. Inside the port, the enslaved Africans were forced to drink water from the port, but the drinking is survival of the fittest because if the water water finished from the port, it will not be refilled till the following day. So that's why the struggle to get water from the slave drinking port. At the same place, we have the replica of the slave ship. Inside the ship, we have the upper deck and the lower deck. So upper deck for the masters and the lower deck for the enslaved Africans. At the lower deck, we have been lying down facing up for two to 12 weeks. At the same position, that's where they urinate and defecate. And when the ship becomes too heavy, they pick some of the enslaved Africans and they throw them inside the ocean to make the ship become lighter. At the upper gallery, you have a resistance, you have resistance and punishment. They are going to see a dog catching a runaway slave. Most times, those dogs are trained to go for the adogula of the slave, then kill the enslaved Africans because they don't want the slave to free to escape so that they will not come back and then plan against the masters and then kill the masters. That is why they prefer the enslaved Africans to die than going alive. Also, we are going to see different punishment given to the enslaved Africans on the plantation. Then we are going to see the lashing, the hanging of the enslaved Africans. And also we have the story of a woman called Margaret Tana, who killed a Portuguese. That she referred to that with a kid.